Speaker Matagot Kankorla. Minister, I'm going to be very blunt about this motion and this report. Quite simply, the adoption of the recommendations contained in this report would represent the crossing of an ethical and legislative rubicon that is almost too terrifying to even contemplate. If adopted, the Oireachtas will have opened a Pandora's box where the livelihood the likelihood of grave injustices being visited upon one of the most vulnerable groups in our society will move from grim possibility to absolute certainty. The recommendation to proceed with legislation in this area, contrary to the overwhelming concerns of palliative care experts and hospice providers, is breathtaking in its arrogance, apparent indifference and willful cruelty. Given the clear and unambiguous international experience, there can be no excuses from members to say that they were operating in good faith or that they were hoping for the best. We know what the outcome of permissive law in this will achieve. The untimely, unfair and cruel and intentional infliction of premature debt where care and compassion could have been offered. This doll must reject this report. It must not allow what is essentially a monstrous dereliction of care to become embedded in our understanding of medicine and our treatment of the vulnerable. Once this line is crossed, I'm sure that members will in time come to see it as one of the single worst decisions that they have ever taken. I want to read a comment from Jane Lazar of End of Life Ireland on this report. And I quote, we're asking you as legislators to honour a person who has a terminal or life limiting diagnosis because time alone or foreseeable debt ought not to be the sole basis for calculating eligibility criteria and end of quote. I ask members to consider the dire situation this will create for those with dementia, reduced capacity, young children or those who are in poverty and cannot afford medical care, which ought to be theirs by right. We have seen in every single jurisdiction where so-called cautious law in this area is introduced that it quickly expands to include the most wide-ranging categories of people. I would also like to quote from the Minority Report on this issue, page three of the Minority Report, and I quote, what was most surprising was that at the end of the hearings, there were no committee meetings to discuss the import of the evidence received. Rather, following the final public committee meeting, a draft report was prepared by the Secretariat, together with possible recommendations, and committee members were given three working days to submit amendments. At the first private meeting to discuss this draft report, some committee members moved quickly for a vote on the first recommendation that the government introduce legislating, legislation allowing for assisted dying in certain circumstances, as set out in the recommendations of this report. That vote was held despite calls for prior full deliberation on all of the evidence presented. As summarised in the draft report, one amendment to that wording ultimately prevailed, the addition of the word restrictive. Thus, without any committee discussion of the over 70 hours of oral testimony, nor of the many private submissions, there was a rush to vote on the substantive issue. At that point, the committee members had not fully clarified for themselves what was meant by assisted dying as evidenced by a proposed amendment to the draft report. That clarification only subsequently emerged after debate during the second, pri second private meeting on the draft report." End quote. I ask this very serious question. Why are we determined to replicate the moral and ethical horrors that legislation of this kind ushers in everywhere that it has been supported? Where is our sense, sense of the sacredness of human life gone? What is the real agenda here? Why are we determined to simply dismiss the pleas 
of palliative care professionals and set ourselves up as gods on the issue of life and death. This report must be rejected outright. It is an affront to every ethical and medical protection that exists for the vulnerable and for the sick. It will be to our lasting shame if this report is adopted. Gerv Margot.